Hi, my name's Nick Bookman. Um, you're here at Superbooth on the Novation stand, and I'm here to talk to you about the technology that we've uh, used on our latest synthesizer, Peak. Peak is um, a hybrid synthesizer. That means that we've married some digital technology with some analog electronics. The analog side of this is the uh, analog distortions, which are uh, pre-filter, post-filter, and also a final distortion in the effects section. And the filter itself is a classic state variable filter. And um, we've also got analog VCAs on the output. These are uh, under control from the same IC, the FPGA that's generating the oscillator signals, and it's also um, handling the time-based effects, the chorus, the delay, and the reverb. In addition to that, it's also providing the modulation sources, three, em uh, three envelopes and two LFOs. The LFOs themselves, they can run up to audio rate, um, up to about 1.6 kilohertz, so it's very, very fast. Um, there's lots and lots of synthesis capabilities inside here with a mob matrix that's got 16 slots, lots of sources and lots and lots of destinations. With the um, earlier synths that we, we did, even going back to, say, the, uh, the Supernova, they run at a traditional sample rate. So by that I mean the type of sample rate that you typically use in, in your door or uh, on a CD player, 44.1, 48 kilohertz. Uh, some synths uh, that use DSP might even run up to, say, 96 kilohertz. Uh, and they use, uh, say, 16-bit, it's pretty typical. Um, that can create problems with the oscillators. You can get uh, aliasing problems unless you band limit the oscillators. Um, what we've done in, in Peak is we're using a direct digital synthesis technique. We are generating the oscillators at very, very high uh, rates. The oscillators are generated at 24 megahertz. And um, that is then uh, output via a single bit, uh, rather than say 16 bits, just one bit that's uh, moving up and down at a very, very fast rate. What this means that we can do is um, not have to band limit the oscillators. You maintain a really uh, alias-free oscillator up into the, the upper limits of the, the audio spectrum. Any aliasing issues are pushed way, way beyond that. That's the technology for the oscillators, but the same sort of technique is also being used to generate the uh, analog control signals. So um, the signals that control the VCAs, the, um, the filters, the distortions. We've got all the analog paths on the PCB that's all being generated by the FPGA and all being pushed out. Other than the uh, alias free, um, oscillator path, it means that we've got greater flexibility in here. I mean, one thing that we could have done, we could have gone completely analog. But then we'd, we're missing out on some really cool tricks that we've got in here. For example, we've got uh, shape modulation on all of the oscillator types, and that's both what you consider traditional synth types and wavetables. So we've got wavetables in here as well, which is really cool. Marrying the wavetables up with the analog side of things and having the effects processing is just it's awesome. Well, um, one of the things that um, Novation typically does, um, say particularly with the, the mod sources, the LFOs, we've got some really cool tricks going on with those. We've got LFOs per voice. There are eight voices, two LFOs. We've got 16 LFOs running there. And they can be run unsynchronized or synchronized. Um, the choice is up to you, there's settings there. The great thing about that is that when they're unsynchronized, you can have different phase relationships between the different voices. Um, and that's brilliant for, for making pads really come alive. Um, you can move the pitch around of each, each voice or each note independently, yeah. Um, you can key sync the oscillators. You can stop the oscillators after a certain number of cycles. Um, uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Also with the uh, oscillator section, something that we introduced on the Supernova, in fact, it was via one of the, the firmware updates, as I mentioned in one of the other videos. Um, we have been able to introduce firmware updates along the lines because of the technology we used. DSP is quite an open architecture. 
we introduced something called double sort, which is a way of actually providing two sorteds instead of just one for every oscillator. And you can adjust the phase of those from the shape amount. The shape amount itself can be modulated by an LFO. If the LFO is sorted type, then you get a continual phase change between these two oscillators, and it generates two pitches, two oscillators from one oscillator, with no loss of polyphony. In the uh, oscillator section as well, we've got uh, saw density, which um, actually provides three oscillators, three saws per oscillator. So if you use that in conjunction with the double saw, you're at four oscillators. There are three oscillators on here, so really you can have 12 oscillators. But then there's a unison mode as well, and that's eight voices, so now you're, you're uh, 12 times eight. <laughs> Big man. <laughs> Big, yeah. <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Um, yeah, lots and lots of uh, really big, rich textures can be generated from this thing.